Hello everybody, welcome to your topic for ticket to retake, your topic for test. So this video will serve as an answer key for you, for your review, and also um, hopefully provide some reteaching and some review that will help you have a successful test retake. All right, so for exercises one and two, find the unknown angle measures in each triangle. So things we need to look out for when we are dealing with triangles, uh, we had a big emphasis on isosceles triangles and equilateral triangles, okay? So isosceles triangles are when you have your two congruent sides. So triangle J, K, L, this is an isosceles triangle. Um, a bonus that you get with an isosceles triangle, in addition to the two congruent sides, are you are gonna get two congruent angles. So the angles, here's one thing I wanna point out. Do you see how this congruent side and this congruent side meet at angle K? That is not one of the two congruent angles. It's gonna be these angles. So this is congruent to this. All right, so we have to find all of our unknown angles. All that we have to work with right here is this 125 degrees. But if you notice, 125 degrees is right next to this angle with this straight line. So this is a linear pair. This linear pair means that they add up to 180 degrees. So we can take 180 and subtract out the 125 to get our angle measure. So that gives us 55 degrees. So what we just figured out is that, oh, there we go, nice. This angle right here is 55 degrees. And because we know that it's congruent to this angle on the right side, we know that that's 55 degrees. And then we need our last angle up there at K. To find that, we can take 180, minus those two 55 degree angles because now we know two angles inside this triangle. So 180 minus this 55 minus this 55 is gonna leave us with the last angle that we need. And that's a 70 degree angle. All right, so let's go ahead and list these angles and I think that we could use some practice on listing these angle measures using uh, three letters to list the angle or name the angle. So the measure of angle, I'm gonna talk about this one up there. I could say angle K, because it is the only angle at K. However, this angle right here, we can name as angle J, K, L, or we could say angle K, or excuse me, L, K, J. Either one of those would be fine. So I'm just gonna go with J, K, L, when we name an angle with three letters, it's the middle letter where the angle is located, that's our vertex, and then you wanna make sure we notice we're using an angle symbol, that's not a triangle. So this isn't the whole triangle or all three angles, it's just angle K. We said that that was 70 degrees. The measure of angle, now over here angle L, we actually have two angles. So we do have to use um, three letters to name the angle. So I need to make sure I put L in the middle. So I'm gonna say J, L, K, and that's this angle at L. That is 55 degrees. And then our last angle, we'll have the measure of angle, is this one right here at J, but again, we have two angles. So which one are we talking about? Um, as long as we put J in the middle, that's our vertex, I'm gonna say angle K, J, L is equal to 55 degrees. All right, moving on to number two. Uh, what we notice about number two is we have two congruent, oh, that's not a pretty color. There we go, a little better. Um, two congruent sides, so this is an isosceles triangle. Um, we need to find our unknown angle measures. So when you have an isosceles triangle, let's just remember that that's two congruent sides and the bonus of that is you get two congruent angles. Again, where the two congruent sides meet here at angle R, 
that is not one of the congruent angles. So the other angles, this angle here at S and this angle here at T, those are our congruent angles. So in order to find the measure of these angles, we need to know the value of X. It's really tempting just to say that 3X minus 2 is equal to 9X plus 4. Just, you know, set things equal to, to each other in our picture. Um, but we, we can only set things equal to each other if we actually know that they are congruent and would have the same measure. So 3X minus 2, this angle is not congruent to this angle, but 3X minus 2 is congruent to this angle. So one thing that we could do is we don't have a ton of information yet, but we know that this angle would also be 3X minus 2. So now I have all three angles labeled. Um, what do we know about the angles in a triangle? We know that they add up to 180 degrees. So that is an equation that I know is true. I know that this angle plus this angle plus this angle equals 180. And if we work with that equation, we will be able to solve for x. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so we're going to take our angles, 9x plus 4, plus the other angle, 3x minus 2, plus the third angle, 3x minus 2. And if we add up our three angles, we will get 180 degrees. From here, we'll just combine our like terms. We have 9x plus 3x is 12x plus another 3x is 15x. Then we have 4 minus 2 is 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. So we just have 15x plus 0, or 15x equals 180. And then our last step is we will divide by 15 to get our x value. So x equals 12. Did they ask us for x? No, they didn't. They wanted to know what each angle measure was. But now that we know what x is, we can plug it back into each angle and figure out the measure. So for angle t, we can say 3 times 12 minus 2. 3 times 12 is 36, and 36 minus 2 is 34. So I know that this angle right here is 34 degrees. Well, it's congruent to angle S, so I'm going to say that one's also 34 degrees. And then to get angle R, we just have to say 180. Um, well, all right, first let's talk about it. We know two angles in our triangle, and all three angles add up to 180. So if we take 180, subtract the 34 and the other 34, we will get angle R. So angle R is 112 degrees. All right, so to answer the question, why don't we work on that notation with the three letters again to name an angle. So the measure of angle R, I'm going to name it with three letters, and I'm going to put the R in the middle. So I can say TRS. So the measure of angle TRS, that's angle R, is 112 degrees. The measure of angle, if we want to look at this one, let's put T in the middle, RTS, is 34 degrees. And last, the measure of angle up here at S, just put S in the middle, maybe we can say RST. That angle was 34 degrees. All right, look at that. Really nine minutes, we got two problems done. <laughs> okay, so next section. For exercises three and four, find the lengths of all sides of each triangle. All right, so if we look at the triangle in number three, what we want to take note of is that we have this angle right here congruent to this angle. So triangles that have two congruent angles are isosceles, which means that they also have two congruent sides. So kind of like bonus, you might know the two sides are congruent. So bonus, you get two congruent angles or maybe you know two angles are congruent, bonus, that means we have two congruent sides. 
So which sides are they? If you look at angle X and angle Z, the side that connects those two angles, that's not one of the congruent sides, which means the other two sides are congruent. When you know something that's congruent, that's the equation that you can write. So we can say 4X plus 1 is equal to 29 and solve this equation to find X. We'll subtract 1, so 4X is equal to 28. Divide both sides by 4, so X equals 7. They did not ask us to find 7, they wanted us to find all of our sides. Um, so we can plug the 7 back in. I will say right here though, segment or side YX is congruent to YZ, and because YZ is 29, I know that this side is going to be 29. But then we can plug in 7 for this x, 7 times 7 minus 1. That's 49 minus 1, which is 48. So one thing to think about, we know that the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. The sides of a triangle do not add up to any specific number. So I could not set an equation, this plus this plus this equals some standard number, because that's just not true for triangles. All right, so let's go ahead and answer the question. We know that YZ, so these are segments, is equal to 29. We know that XY is equal to 29. And XZ is equal to 48. All right, number four, let's find the lengths of all sides of the triangle. We notice that we have two congruent sides, so that means when you have two congruent sides, you also have, I'm sorry, we have two congruent angles, my brain is skipping ahead. That means we have two congruent sides. What are the two sides? Well, it's not going to be the side in between your two congruent angles. It is going to be the other two sides. So there's your equation. Anything we mark congruent, we can set equal to each other. So 3x plus 4 is equal to 10. Let's subtract 4, divide by 3, and x equals 2. So we know that BC is 10. AC, because AC is congruent to BC because of the isosceles triangle, I don't need to plug in the 2. I know that this is going to be 10. And then to get BA, I can plug in the 2, 2 plus 3, and we get a 5. So to write out our answer though, let's just make sure we're really solid with our notation. We know that AB, segment AB is equal to 5, BC is equal to 10, and CA is equal to 10. All right, so for exercises five through seven, use triangle ABC to find the missing measures. So if we look at triangle ABC, we have a big triangle ABC, and then we do also have two smaller triangles in here, okay? Um, first thing that I notice is we have two congruent sides. So triangle ABC, the big triangle, is an isosceles triangle. When you have two congruent sides, you get those bonus congruent angles. So where our two sides meet, see how our congruent sides are meeting at angle A? That's not one of the congruent angles, so our congruent angles must be the other two, so we can go ahead and mark those as congruent, which means now we know that this is 67. Um, let's see, what else can we figure out? Up here at angle A, we have two angles. If I look at this triangle on the bottom, it's a right angle, so I know that that's 90 degrees. This is 67. We can find this angle right here by just subtracting those from 180. So if you do 180 minus 90 minus 67,
is 576, and there's our equal c squared. Now we'll add these together. 100 plus 576 is 676, and then we'll just square root both sides. Square root of 676 is 26, so we just found out that c is 26. Remember, c was the hypotenuse of that triangle, so we know that a, b is 26, which answers it over here. So when you guys have pictures like this, um, I don't, I mean, I, I look at what they're asking for, but I also understand that sometimes it's helpful just to start filling in the information you could figure out, um, because oftentimes we have to get to these answers in more of a roundabout way. So when I see a figure like this, I just start thinking about what I know and what that can lead me to, and then eventually I'll get to these over here.